Welcome to Dog King, and today we're going to be doing scriptures. I'm doing a magic show. We're going to be doing a magic show. I'm joking. It's going to be scriptures. Good job. <laughs> okay. Can the lightest be office? Office? <laughs> okay. Good wizard. <clears throat> so we're going to continue, right, from <clears throat> from our last reading. We finished chapter uh, 7 in Genesis, and we were introduced to Noah and his family, and Noah built the ark. Is it on? It is. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start reading, shall I? <clears throat> so, no, wait, 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 wait. this is chapter 8 of Genesis, what? verse 1. What am I supposed to be reading? Oh, yeah. Okay, come on. I have to read from here, but that's okay because I'm really tall. Mm -hmm. So, where are we reading? Verse 1 in chapter 8. That's chapter 8? Yep. My, oh my, couldn't it be? Yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> How many verses are there? Oh, 22. Okay, I can read that much. And then it will be Tabor's turn. Okay. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him to, in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters as waves. Is they that they the, parted. Mm -hmm. Is that what the word is? Assuaged, yep. Assuaged, okay, okay, okay. That means subsided. Subsided, what does it, that mean? It means they went away. Ah. They stopped raining <clears throat> and flooding. Wait, they stopped, or do you mean started? They stopped because remember they had already flooded and rained for for forty days and forty nights. That was in chapter seven. I don't remember reading that. Oh, <laughs> maybe you weren't reading, Oscar. No, I wasn't reading, but I don't. But I was listening. Mm. And I don't remember doing it. Yeah. So the rain it rained for forty days and forty nights, and the earth filled with water and flooded, and it, the water came out of the sky and from out of the ground. There was yeah. so much water. The, fa the fountains also of the deep and the windows of the heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 day days, the waters were abated. 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 Mm -hmm. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventh day of the month. Seventeenth day. Seventeenth seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month. Upon the mountain of Ararat. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month in the tenth in the tenth month. On the first day of the month were the tops of the mountain se mountain sea. Wow. So that's interesting that the ark in verse 4 rested in the seventh month. Hmm? Remember how I said seven, seven is a perfect number? Seven is a very symbolic number. It's the God's it's God's number, one of God's numbers. Symbolic? Uh-huh. God's number? I'm seven! I'm a god! <laughs> that means I'm a god! Ah! Okay, Oscar, keep reading. What the heck? <clears throat> and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth the raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also, he sent forth a drove from him to see a dove a dove 
from him. See if the waters were abated. Abated? Abated from all the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. And she returned unto him mm -hmm. and to the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him, wait, unto him, into the ark. Mm -hmm. And he stayed yet another seven days, and yet he sent forth the dove out of the ark. Okay, so why is he sending forth a dove? What do you think? Why would he let release a dove? Because it's, number one, because it's God's word. Okay, and the dove, a dove returns. It knows where its home is and it will return, right? Mm -hmm. But what do you think he sent her out to find? Grass. Grass? Grass, grass, grass. Yeah, a plant, right? To see if, the, if, the, if there was any dry land. Mm -hmm. Okay. You let me read now. <clears throat> okay, where was I? verse 11 now. Verse 11, yay. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf. Pluck, pluck it off. Plucked so, off. Plucked off. So no knew what the waters were abated from Abated. Off, abated from off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth the dove will return not again from him anymore. And okay, why do you think the dove did not come back? I think I know. Why? Because it found land! That's right, it found land. It found its own olive branch, huh? So it was just eating, probably. Its own tree. Mm -hmm. So verse 13. Yep. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, hmm. in the first month and first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and no one removed the covering of the ark, and, and looked, and being of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And the leaf was so it took a away. whole year. Hmm. And in the second month, month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives and thee with thee. With thee. So bring forth with thee every living thing that is thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the earth. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. 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 And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. 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 And the Lord said. In his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more anything living as I have done. Everything living. <coughs> While the while the earth remaineth, seed time <coughs> and harvest. I'm gonna read twenty three now. While the earth remaineth. Seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Okay, that's <coughs> chapter eight. eight. So now Tamara is going to read 15 verses. That might even be all the verses. 
So she's going to read 15 verses in chapter 9. So let's get to that. Oh, by the way, if you don't know who Tabor is, this is who she is. Hi, I'm Tabor. Nice to meet you. <coughs> so we get to learn about Tabor, or Tabor, Noah's family and they, what they've been commanded to do now that the flood is done. Yay! So remember all the wickedness and all of the uh, satanic people had been removed from the earth with the flood, right? So everything should be, <coughs> should be clean and pure. Mm-hmm. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the earth, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, Unto your hand are they de 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 delivered. Mm -hmm. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require of the life of man. Okay, so, okay, keep reading one, one more verse. One more verse. Uh -huh. Who, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. Okay, so what he's saying is, <coughs> um, it basically it's capital punishment. Hmm? So anyone who kills another man will have to die himself. What? Okay, and then he also commanded, whoops. <laughs> well, that's also, not my fault. He also commanded, let's see, there we go. He also commanded um, that, he, that animal sacrifice come as well. Right. <clears throat> um, okay. And let's see. Does the table look so cute this way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so there we have. Now he's going to give them other commandments. Verse 7. And you be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, and I behold, I establish with covenant with you, and with your seed after, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the earth, to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there are anymore be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual 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 generations. That means for generations to come. I do set my bow in the bow, bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token for a token, a uh, co covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be see seen in, in the cloud. What's a bow? I don't know. Bow of the arrow? 
No, what do you see when it rains? What's in the sky? Clouds. And what bow? A rainbow. A rainbow. <clears throat> so that is, this is God saying, he will put a rainbow in the sky when it rains to remind us of the covenant that he's made that he will never flood the earth again. Not when it rains, it has to be a little, some sunlight too. Yeah, that's right, because the rainbow, the sun reflects off of the... Yeah, so different. it makes a cycle of colors. Uh-huh, that's right. Okay, 15. Mm -hmm. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Okay, Tabor, you read 15. Yeah, I don't want to read anymore. Okay. Do you want me to read, or do you want to read? You can read. Okay, and the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, <clears throat> that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. <laughs> and God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So a token is like a sign of a resemblance or a symbol of the covenant that God has made. So the rainbow is the symbol of the covenant that God made to never flood the earth again. <clears throat> and the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. <clears throat> and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not the, their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the oh, days of Noah, Noah were 950 years, and he died. died. Okay. Thanks! <clears throat> so, I'm not 100% sure what this, what this um, covering of Noah was. Um, but it might be a curse. We'll have to see. Hopefully, in Moses, it will expound and tell us more. <laughs> we'll just have to see. Okay, well, thank you, Clinton and Tabor. Tabor and Oscar for reading. And for everybody for reading along. Wait, Oscar, where's your, where, where's your wizard staff? Buddy, you got to have the wizard staff. Uh oh. It was a sharpie. Where? <laughs> Hang on, don't pause the video yet. Hmm. So tomorrow we're going to read chapters 10 and 11. And we'll find out a little bit more. Watching, make sure to like, subscribe, and the bell button. Ding, 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 so you do not miss another video. Oh, <laughs> and bye. 
Oh, and Oscar has to say bye too. Bye. Video will be off it.